Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about a right arm move to release the club on plane. So we're out here at the West Haven Golf Club today with Ben Pelicani. Again, as we told you guys before, we're looking to bring you the best of the best of golf coaches and information. And we're here uh, just outside of Nashville in Franklin, Tennessee with Ben, who we'll bring in in a minute. Uh, most of you guys know Ben, hopefully, from uh, Instagram. We'll link uh, his stuff down below so you guys can check that out, at Pelly Golf. Um, if you don't know Ben, Ben is one of Golf Digest's best young teachers and best teachers in the state of Tennessee. And you guys will see why in a minute. So we're going to bring Ben in to talk about this right arm move. Now, as always, I would love for you guys to check out Cogorno Golf. This is where I can guide you through your process of getting better. It's where you can send in your swing videos, you get access to our Facebook group, everything on our site, including the members library, the practice section, and the quick fix section, as well as all of our master classes. So if you want to learn more about what's in today's video and have me help you and coach you over the winter, that's where we can do it. We'll include a link in the description down below. Hey Ben, thanks for being out here with us today. Absolutely, Appreciate excited. Appreciate you. So uh, we're gonna talk about this right arm move to release the club on plane. And I think to get started, maybe if we uh, switch spots and we start with a little demo of what we're talking about here in general, and then uh, we'll go through conceptually what we're talking about, give a couple of drills in terms of how to practice. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, cool. I think what I find a lot with my students is they struggle to understand what releasing the club is. And so, you know, when you think about how people teach, there's always systems to how they teach. And systems are great, yeah. but you gotta put the pieces together, right? And so I believe a lot in trying to control the club face at a high level. I, everything I teach is around that idea of how good can we get at controlling this club face. And so, you know, when you think about it, if, if I was gonna release the club on plane, right? That kind of mythical plane that we talk about. Yeah. But if we change perspectives of that, yeah. and we put it at more eye level, what would that look like? And so if I was trying to release a club on plane and I was doing it at eye level, I would never need to get my right arm over top of or on top of my left arm or my lead arm. So yeah. as I'm sitting here releasing the club on plane, right, yeah. at eye level, kind of like releasing it on a tabletop, I'm able to square the club face and release, meaning kind of unhinge or create some speed by unhinging the club. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to walk you through how to release it on plane, which again will kind of lead us to the next step of how can we kind of keep that face as stable through impact as possible. So let's, let's go it. ahead and, yeah, and try to, it. you know, get up kind of at that eye level. Yep. And as you do that, go ahead and take it back for me. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep your right arm underneath left and go ahead and release that. And so as you notice, the club is never really passing your hands. Yep. The club face is squaring. And then this time, go ahead and release and hold. And then let's go ahead and rotate, rotate, rotate. And as you do that, you'll notice the club kind of matches your spine angle a little bit. The club heads outside your hands. And from kind of face on, you'll see this kind of window between your arms. I love that. And so what, what you've kind of taught yourself how to do there, right? And this is the important thing. We got to educate our hands. Yep. What I see a lot of players and amateurs do is they want to kind of throw it and kind of push out with that right arm. Got it. And so one of the drills I like every one of my students to do is what is called a hit and hold. Hit and so, hold. So, um, you know, we kind of have that benchmark that you just showed me that kind of release it on a tabletop, rotate yeah. and hold. And so, you know, when you sit here and hit golf balls, you know, you can learn how to rotate and hold. And if you do that, you can learn to kind of really control the club face at a, at, you know, at a really high level. And so yeah. we got a little drill for you on that one. So I, I want to pause there for a second because <clears throat> you just dropped like six or seven bombs that were perfect. So I think A, conceptually, the idea of uh, releasing the club on a, on a tabletop in front of you, for me, as I'm literally doing this right now, creates such a good visual. So when I'm doing that and I'm even setting that up, my, for the person who's gonna do this, my right arm is gonna be underneath my left arm to start. Absolutely. Right? And then when I'm taking the club back, the primary motion that I take the club back in is gonna be, can we say hinge? Yeah, I hinge think hinge it? is a great word. So we're gonna hinge. So I'm gonna be here, my right arm underneath my left, um, and then I'm gonna hinge the club back. And for me to get from this position back to what would be an impact position on the tabletop, 
would be mostly the unhinging that's getting it back there. Is that fair? Absolutely. And, and I think a lot of people even say like, it's a lot of left hand. Yeah. Right. I think a lot of a lot of amateurs and pros alike, they their instinct is to want to try to throw it with their right hand. Got it. And so um, some people say it's because it's their dominant hand, but you know I've seen guys who are who are left-handed by writing but play golf right hand and, and they struggle with this as well. So I, I don't see any correlation between that. I just think yeah. instinctually we try to hit it with this hand, Absolutely. and so you know I think that that kind of educating the left wrist. Yep. to do that but the only reason you do that is if that right arm kind of stayed a little bit more passive and so when i'm doing this i'm feeling a little bit of the un releasing the club right which is the unhinging as my right arm stays under and then you gave a great visual which i'm going to do to this camera of like three little checkpoints there at the finish of if you were hitting these little drills which if i did this same piece right and i was doing it this way you would be able to one see that the club face the leading edge of the club face would be somewhat similar to parallel to let's say my spine angle absolutely some amount of tilt i would have the club head to the right from the target angle of my hands right so from the down the line it would be to the right of my hands and there would be a circle or a space underneath my left arm but above my right so as a little checkpoint for a drill if someone was doing this and let's say i'm big on people recording themselves if they would get to that finish position and they saw those three checkpoints, um, those would be three good things to look for as, hey, I did this somewhat successfully. Is that fair? Yeah, and, and I think, again, it's, it's the reason why those three things show up, right? Yes. And, and they showed up because you actively unhinged the club yep. on plane yep. without rolling the club. And, you know, I kind of use this analogy. You would never putt rolling the club. True. Yeah. Why? Because it'd be really hard to control the club face, right? Yeah. So, you know, what I, what I think is going to happen is, you know, if, if you go out and do this the first time, most people will leave a ball out to the right. Yeah. And the reason is they've never learned to use their left hand to square a club face up because they've always either thrown it with the right. I mean, if you think about it, if I let this club head pass my hands, yeah. Let's that have club you come face, over here, Ben, and do that. Yeah, that, that's good. You know, if, if you think about it, this yeah. goes this way, that club face is now pointing left. Absolutely. So why would you roll, you know, why would you add a little left wrist? You just hit it left of left, which exactly. doesn't sound very fun no either, right? No motivation there. And so, you know, the first time you do this drill for most people, they'll hit a ball and they'll hit it way right. They'll say, what's up, Ben? I yeah, like this is the worst drill ever. <laughs> what do you mean this is the window to success, right? So, but then it's that education of the hands, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I like to play golf on the offensive, not on the defensive. Mm. So if you notice when you were doing this, you were actively unhinging the club, yeah. right? And so it's that, it's that aggressive move because under pressure right we create some tension it's harder to be aggressive yeah and so if i could stand up and know that a i'm never going to hit it left yeah. why because my right arm never crossed over and i know i'm not going to hit it right because i'm actively unhinging it with my left yeah so now i can play golf on the offensive and not on the defensive and that's what fires me up so i love that guys and I just as a uh, we're going to do it in a minute here i'm going to hit a couple shots with those feels and then we're going to show you a drill that we can use to do that but just generally that concept of releasing it on plane i think is huge so um let's uh why don't i come in hit a couple shots and then we'll do some drills all right ben so let me uh let me go through and hit a couple like this so as a starting point let's say someone says hey ben i get this i want to start training this um if i were to do my tabletop right i feel this up here right arms underneath my left I'm gonna get my club head back and I feel like I'm releasing that club with my right arm under my left. And then once I feel that into an impact position on that plane, I'm gonna take my, go ahead and rotate, right? Maintaining this and rotating that into a, a follow through position. Absolutely. That would be a good starting point for someone to get introduced to this. Yeah, start getting that feel of what those hands should be doing. Got it. And so I have a feel for that. Let me do that one more time. So I'm feeling this. I'm feeling my right arm underneath my left. So let me just do a little half one here just to get a sense of that. See if I can hit that finish position. So that for me felt like I hit those checkpoints pretty good. Um, and then I again would be, because sort of give myself some feedback with the contact, I'd give myself feedback with the video as to whether I did that right. And that would be a great starting point, but we actually can add a drill layer to this in one second. Okay, so, you know, I think I'm a big feedback guy. Yeah. And so I got two little girls. One of them's four years old, and she's learning how to write. 
Yeah. And when you learn to write, you started with those little dotted letters, right? And you had to learn how to trace how to write. Yes. And so, and then you try to write the letter on your own, right? And then you have to try to write in a sentence kind of fast. So, you know, you got to have these feedback tools. Love it. And so, you know, one of the things I like to do is I actually kind of use training aids sometimes, not how they're designed. Yeah. But um, I, I, t I took this swing align training aid, and this really all it is is, a, is an alignment stick kind yep. of stuck on the underside of your lead arm. Got it. But what it does, it kind of gives you some, some reference point if that right arm gets high. Got it. And so ideally, we'd love to see that finished position. And again, you can even do that little tabletop look to finish. You'll notice that stick will never really put much pressure on your right bicep. Got it. So as you release it on plane and then kind of match up in your rotation to finish, you never really touched it. So there's the window between my left arm and the right arm, that circle from face on that you would see. If I were to do it incorrectly, this would be, I'd have a rollover, right, if, if you would, where my right arm would get above my left and hit that stick. Yeah, and you can now start seeing the club head getting outside your hands, right, yeah. to the left. Club face very tilted down. Yeah, and so now we have a lot of timing to our golf swing. And so really what this is, is there's an object, what feels like for me in my own terms here, there's an object underneath my arm at roughly maybe just beyond a 45 degree angle in front of me, maybe 40 degrees, where it's a little bit above my right arm here, if someone were to try to replicate this. Could they put an object and kind of squeeze it under their arm if they don't have this? Is that Prop, You know, the, the challenge with that, and, and you could, yeah. would be in your finish. Got right. It. Got um, it. You know, I, I like to see that left arm stay extended really, really a long time. So, yeah. you know, you could. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be you're going to be challenged a little bit with yep. that. Yep. But, no um, you know, if, if that's all you got, I say go with it. Better than nothing. Absolutely. So for me to feel this into the follow through and part of where this discussion started is getting a sense of my right arm staying underneath my left arm at, and then past impact into that follow through spot. Right. Ab absolutely, because if again, if that right arm never crossed over, man, it's awfully hard to hit a ball left. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So this, this, and I'm hitting balls with this, right? Yeah, absolutely. The same little kind of hit and hold drill you were just showing me there before. And it really gives me a sensation of, like I can feel where my right shoulder and, and my tilt and where my right arm is in space in being lower than where maybe sometimes I would, I would try and even used to do that by myself. Can we give them, Ben, a rough um, sort of mark here where we could say, hey, once you get two arms parallel in the follow through, perhaps I want to keep my right arm like under my left bicep or, or something like that as a, as a rough mark? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of, so now you're getting into some interesting conversations because some of those have to do with grip styles. Got it. Right? And so you might see a guy like Zach Johnson, who's one of the stronger grips on tour, right? And so he's having that window for a really long time. That's a great point. Right? Yeah. And then you get a guy, say, like Jack Nicholas, right? Or Jordan Spieth, yeah. who have a really weak grip. And we might see that window start closing, you know, after their hands pass belt high. Yep. And again, that has to do with grip style. So, you know, I, I think the key to this drill is as you're doing this drill, it's, it's more of kind of this philosophical, hey, I just never want to throw the club with my right hand, right? I don't want to flip it. I'm going to learn to educate myself to use my left, but if I'm going to use my left, my right arm's got to be in the right place to allow me to use my left. Perfect, love it. Let's try one with this underneath here. And I'm going to really try and feel that same um, unhinging with my trail arm underneath my lead arm. And I'll just chip one out here first to start. Trail arm underneath my lead arm to get a sensation of that. Yeah, and the thing I really love with what you just showed right there is again, you actively released the club, yep. but you never rolled the club. Yes. And so again, if, if I'm trying to play golf, you know, on the offense, if I'm trying to attack a golf course, then I can sit there and feel like I'm firing it with my left hand, yep. and I never have to worry about left. And that's kind of a fun place to be as a player. Yeah. And, and you played, and I, and I played in, in college, and you know, if I could stand out there with no fear of a side of a golf course, yep. and the fact that I could be aggressive, yeah. I mean, I'd be in a pretty good place. So this is beautiful, and I love all of this. If we can, over this way, kind of give a, a one or two or three sentence little recap of what we're talking about here, right? If I'm going to start my process, because this is all about my right arm staying underneath my left, right? That's kind of big picture what we're talking about. As I'm starting this process, with or without a feedback tool, I am, with a uh, kind of tabletop example, 
looking for me to learn to unhinge the club on plane while keeping my right arm underneath my left, right? That's kind of our big picture starting topic. Absolutely. Into the follow through, we gave three easy checkpoints that they can look at as a finish position, which into the follow through would be the leading edge of the club here, roughly on my spine angle. The club head would be slightly to the right of where my hands are. And then there would be a window between my right arm and my left arm. Absolutely. And as a starting point, as a drill, when they're doing that, something underneath here to keep their right arm uh, under would be a great way to start that. Yeah, just, and again, gaining that feedback of if you did it right or wrong. Yeah. And, and I think being really intentional in the finish to say what, you know, what did I do well, and then maybe what I need to do better the next time. Love it, Ben, thanks, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe. Thank you guys.